Well, he regularly provides studio warm-up for the Graham Norton show when he's not too busy doing his own show. Loose women and also deal or no deal. He's huge in the UK as well as at the comedy festivals. He performs all around the world and he's been invited back to New Zealand International Comedy Festival for the third year in a row, which means we get to have him in our studio. Welcome, Jimmy McGee. Yes, <laughs> lovely to be here. I'm not sure if I was actually officially invited. I just showed up. No, we... it's great to have you here. Well, that's nice. We thought he's been in the, in the green room for a while. We'll yeah. have a chat with him anyway. <laughs> yeah, I just came for the free coffee. <laughs> um, we had you on last year, so welcome back. It was Thank nice. you. So I'm, I'm surprised to be back after last year. <laughs> it was a bit of a... It was, it, remember Chris Martin, the yes, other comedian? That's right. Not Chris, Martin, Chris Martin. The other... Not the Chris Martin <laughs> tried to pimp me out that's on right. right. television. And he was talking about your love life all the time. Well, yeah, let's he's just obsessed get that with my right love now. life because he's just got married. Right. So he's now an evangelist for, you know, being happy and stable. So he's trying to marry off all of he his friends. He was trying to find all the single people out there for you. So, so yeah. give us an update. Are you still single? <laughs> I am. Great work then, Chris. So he's done a very poor job. <laughs> he's now living in Los Angeles and he has no interest in my love life anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> so nice. Hey, no, well, it's great to have you back here, of course, for the Comedy Fest. We'll talk more about that soon. But I was quite fascinated when you <clears> research <throat> you, uh, yeah. you find out that you were sort of like a, a producer for a science program. On I was an extremely high-ranking television producer in the UK. Wow. Yeah, I occupied the position of senior researcher at the BBC. Um, making science documentaries called Horizon. Really? Nice. Yeah. Well, You're yeah, laughing as if I'm, I'm joking. Genuinely, I was. That's what I did for seven years. Yeah, we're waiting for the punchline. So how long did you do that for? <laughs> seven years. Seven years. Seven years. And then, so what shifted from making science documentaries into um, comedian? I realised that I didn't know anything about science. Right. <laughs> after seven years. And after seven years, I think they started to get this sense that maybe I didn't really know what I was talking about and I'd managed to blag. Uh, seven years of sort of Wikipedia-ing bef immediately before <laughs> meetings and going in and talking about black holes and everyone kind of got looking at me going, is that true about that? I'm pretty <laughs> that's sure. That's Mike with the cooking sequence. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just bluff your way exactly. through well, that's, I did a whole show about how I bluffed my way through yeah. working in the science department because we were there when Professor Brian Cox, do you have him down here? No, but I know the name. Oh, OK. Yes. He's, a big, he's a big science presenter back home. and you know, He was first coming in. He's the most intelligent man in the world, and I had to drive him <laughs> You were things. providing the research yeah. from him. And, uh, <laughs> he was questioning all of his things, going, I'm pretty sure that's factually <laughs> incorrect, and everyone would look at me. I'd be like, um... It's right. Sorry, Wikipedia guys. Wikipedia said it's right. Um, yeah. Who was the one with the big moustache, the big sci the science guy, um, who did all the studies on children? And Robert, somebody. Oh, Robert Winston. Yes. Professor yes. Robert Winston. Yes. Did you work with him? Uh, I never met the great oh. man, no. But I did enjoy watching him get drunk on television. He did a great documentary where he just drank all the way through and they filmed him live to study the effects of alcohol. And it was hilarious. It was like being at Christmas with your grandfather. Just <laughs> I bet. sozzled in the corner by the end of the program. Going, oh, I see, is that alcohol's so great, it's brilliant. <laughs> and and how did you, then how did you get into comedy? Well, it was my sort of dirty secret for a long time. Right. Um, I, I did it at university when I was a drama student, then I worked in television. And then, um, as you know, when you work in television when you're sort of a junior, you're basically underpaid and overworked. And just as I got through that stage and I started to have some status and some um, remuneration, uh, I threw it all away and ran off to join the circus. So, wow. Was that a bit uh, of a risk? Yeah. <laughs> Huge. But then, you know, look where I'm sitting now, in the chair. You are, for the yeah. third, well, back for the third time. I know. So, yeah, I just started doing it after work. I was doing gigs. I was running off secretly to do gigs and everything, and I was driving up and down the country, and then it got quite intense. So there was times when I'd have to leave work, drive to the north of the country for four hours, do an audition spot for a club, drive all the way back, get up for work the next day. Oof. So when did you realise that you might actually have what it takes and that this could actually be a career for you? Well, I'm not entirely sure that's actually happened yet. <laughs> um, uh, you never do really you just you just it's like um, it's an, it's it's addictive it's like any kind of what I found was whenever I was behind the camera with my clipboard doing all the admin I was secretly wanting to be one of you two you right, know? and I think right. if you have that instinct in you it's never gonna go away so yeah. I don't want to be you know an embittered you know sort of person I wanted to guy. kind of yeah I wanted to just sort of accept the fact that I was vain and I wanted to be a bit of a show front pony. and centre. Absolutely. Well, well, it's speaking, either there or it isn't. <laughs> well, you no, you're right. It. It's either there or it yeah. isn't. So, speaking of being behind the scenes, you have spent a lot of time being the warm-up act for Graham Norton. Tell me about that, because I love that man and that show. So. Well, it's, I mean, you know, warm-up, studio warm-up is pretty... Um, it's fun, but it's also quite dispiriting because basically you'll have the studio audience, your job is to keep them high and happy and engaged and then the guests come mm. on and if there's any breaks or anything then you come back on and you, you keep the energy up. But that means that obviously when the cameras are ready to go, 
you know, you're out. You're out there. So they don't so much go, Jimmy. Just want to wrap this. This. Just finish your next joke, mate, and then we'll get on with it. They. They just cut your microphone. So you'll be standing there in front of 400 people going. <laughs> and then I said. Oh. <laughs> and you just have to sort of walk off, oh, and then Graham comes back on. Yeah. So, so what was Graham Norton like? Was he as Graham nice is as he a, is? Uh, is such a nice man. Uh, I met him in a, in a lift on my first day, and I was very nervous because obviously he was a great stand-up before he was. Uh, a TV host as well, so I admired him from mm. back then. And um, he walked into the lift, and I just was like, "Hello, Graham. My name is oh, Jimmy, <laughs> and I'm your new warm-up man." And I went, oh, it's the easiest job in the world. Ten minutes off the top, and then he won't have to come back on early night. See ya. <laughs> and that's it. That's the only time I've ever really met him. Wow. Um, did, you, did you ever write him any jokes? You know, like were you sitting no, I don't there need thinking, to. I don't need right. to. He doesn't. He just does it all himself. No and also, way. there's no. He's such a pro. There's no pickups at the end. I've never ever gone back on. Um, I've warmed up loads of shows. Uh, we have a, a show similar to this called Loose Women. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quite similar to this. Yeah. <laughs> and I've warmed up that, which was actually much harder because, you know, it's a daytime show and there's yeah. only certain things you can talk about. And Deal or No <laughs> Deal, the game show, yes. do you have that? Yep. Yeah, I did yep. that, yeah. which, is, which is really hard because they bust the audience in and they, they're, they're all of a certain age, right. shall yes. we say, yes. Yes. and half of yes. them are nodding off as you're doing your jokes. <laughs> And then, and then Noel Edmonds, the presenter, will just sort of appear behind you and you won't know that he's there and you'll start getting all these laughs because he's pulling faces. So you think, oh, after ten minutes of turgid stand-up, finally I'm getting the crowd. And then you turn around and it's actually Noel. Just going, oh, oh, good. Noel Edmonds room at Noel Edmonds' house party we used to have here. Yeah. Um, so your show, Tribal Gathering, Yes. tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's basically uh, the inspiration behind it was going backpacking last year, um, doing my OE as your Prime Minister is currently doing. Um, She's back now. Is she? She's yeah. finished. She's come back with a bintang singlet and a, <laughs> and a really bad tattoo. <laughs> I think that's it. It's, it's, some, it's always our divine right to just sort of travel the globe, you know, in a singlet, drinking Jaeger bombs mm -hmm. in every UNESCO World Heritage Site we can find in a lonely planet. Um, yeah. So I went to Indonesia, and I'm in my <clears throat> mid-30s now, yeah. and uh, it was a terrifying discovery that I'm now too old. To be a backpacker, yes, you know, I'm now yeah. the sort of creepy old guy that hangs around the hostel that people really <laughs> don't want to talk to. She's been backpacking with Mike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it's true. I, there's there's a sweet spot when you're in your late twenties when you're kind of cool and older and enigmatic, and people are like, "Wow, where have you been?" And you're like, "I've been everywhere." <laughs> um, and then you just become the creeper, and you, you hear yourself saying to a twenty-year-old, you know, that you're how old you are, and they just look at you like, "Oh, did you just get out of prison? Why are you here?" <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, no, so this is the basis of your show, which well, clearly that's is going to so be about, amazing. It's yeah, about yeah, cool. travelling and backpacking and basically ageing and how you sort of, you know, you do start to feel that you're invincible and then there's a point where you realise, you know... You're you think, actually when not. I'm, when, I'm, when I'm older, I'm going to be in a hammock, you know, lying around all day and then you think, no, I'm not, I'm just going to be annoyed in a post office. That's just what's coming, <laughs> Excellent. You know? Hey, well, that's all we've got time for, so we want to find out more about your backpacking experiences. We're going to have to come and see your show, aren't Absolutely. we? Absolutely, please do. Jimmy McGee will appear in tonight's Best Foods Comedy Gala in Auckland as well and then at Wellington's Opera House on Sunday. He, he will also be performing his solo show, Tribal Gathering at Auckland's Comedy Club from this Saturday until May the 12th. You can check out the Comedy Festival website for ticket details. One of my favourite comedian guests ever. Okay. Is that every time? <laughs> oh, George! Sure, sure. Okay. Great wrap up, guys. <laughs>